I've been cleaning up my house today and I had to deal with this big bowl of oak galls that I collected. An insect um, somehow bites or stings a tree and sends some kind of hormonal message that basically, basically it tricks the tree into growing a house for its offspring. You can see these little dots in each one. Those are the insect larvae and then they hatch and these dry up and sit on the tree and you can use them for stuff. Um, they've been used to make ink for dyeing and tanning and stuff like that. They're very high in tannic acids, and I thought this year I would get some of them in a green state like this, and they're really squishy and juicy, like you can literally squeeze juice out of them. I think you could probably just toss them in a fruit press and squish them uh, like apples, you know, grind them a little first. I've used the boiled ones before and they seem to make kind of a harsh, brittle leather. But I haven't used them enough to get a real feel for, for with their potential. All right, so I'm just gonna juice these up here in the juicer. I'm not sure what all I'm gonna do with the juice yet, but definitely I'm gonna try just putting a piece of skin directly into it to see what happens. Well, the original point was to get this juice out really super clean and clear, but as you can see, some of the galls have started to dry up and oxidize, so I'm getting this brown liquid after all. I have my jar of oak gall juice here, and I'm about to drop in this little strip of goat skin that's already prepared. You know, I did everything to that piece of goat skin that I would do. I prepared it for tanning, basically. It's ready to, ready to tan. So I was just curious uh, how strong this stuff is, what kind of leather it would make, what color it would make. I'm just gonna throw that in there and I also wanna see how strongly it is affected by this completely undiluted pure oak gall juice. Okay, here we are the next morning and this thing is hard. It's decidedly hard. I kinda limbered it up a little bit yesterday, just kinda stretching on it a little bit. Um, but there's no doubt that this is what people refer to as case hardened. It's just very stiff and has just kind of a real, yeah, stiff, hard feel to it, like shrunken up. So basically this probably wouldn't happen if I had diluted this first, but there's another factor, which is just the type of tannins and the quality of the material. So, you know, different materials, it's not like, the, you know, any plant that contains tannic acid is going to produce the same type of, you know, results in leather. That's not, not the case. You can see, I hope, that there's just a thin brown line on each side and the whole center is untanned. Now it's so shrunken down and, and stiff and hard that the tannins probably aren't going to be able to penetrate. So that's the problem of case hardening in a nutshell. The solution is so strong and so active that it just kind of slams the hide and shrinks it and locks down the outside the tannins can't continue to sink into the hide so i'm going to loosen this up by kind of rolling it and stretching it as much as possible and then i'm probably gonna i'm probably just gonna leave it in this solution i don't know actually i think i'm gonna i think i'm gonna scrap this piece completely what am i gonna do i don't know what i'm gonna do i'll think about it <laughs> i'm gonna think about what i'm gonna do Okay, here we are a couple days later. It's actually been tanned through for a little while. There we go. And I'm gonna cut a piece off here and we're gonna look at the inside of it. As you can see, um, it has a nice even color all the way through the piece. So it's definitely tanned through. Also, it is flexible and, you know, it's nice and flexible and it feels like, you know, supple leather. Unlike the first piece, which I also cut a piece off of that first piece that we shocked and uh, case hardened and I tossed that in here and it still has kind of a stiff feel to it so it's definitely different than this is and uh, this this feels much better my guess is this is gonna be more brittle as a finished leather I'm not sure if there's a place where you'd want to do that on purpose maybe I don't know however I don't want everyone to freak out about case hardening because people are always freaking out about case hardening and it leads to a problem that is much 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 more common and that is not using enough tannin and ending up with rotting hides or hides that take you know months and years to tan and I used to do this all the time too for the same reason uh, but case hardening is just not that common uh, you don't want it to happen but let's say if you take almost any tanning material like, like say just cover it with water in a pot and cook it for a while 
and pour that off. Like in most cases, even that's not going to cause like drastic case hardening. But if you diluted that by half, you should be good. Another great way to approach it is just to recook the material a second time, start your hides in that, and then, you know, within a day, start splashing in, you know, some of the more concentrated solution from the first cooking. But everyone freaks out because they hear about case hardening and they're just terrified this is going to happen. I just talked to a viewer about this that had the same thing happen. And it's almost like I can't say enough to keep people from doing this, but it's a much more common problem to not add enough tannin. So what happens is people are afraid of case hardening, they don't use enough tannin to even start the solution first off, and then they don't add it fast enough. This only took two or three days with this prepared thin goat skin. And within, you know, 12 to 24 hours, I was already starting to dump in new concentrate. What I started with, with in here was about half water and half gall juice. And then, yeah, right, you know, pretty quickly, I was already starting to dump in more of the pure gall juice. And within a couple of days, all of it was in there. Really, listen to me. <laughs> Don't worry about case hardening too much. In this case, I'm doing a really thin, well-prepared hide, so it tanned quickly. If you're not, what'll happen, like on a thicker skin, is that the tanning will slow down because it's taking longer for the tannins to get into the center of the hide. And then you can slack off on, on adding solution. But in the, in the beginning, you really want to bump that strength up pretty fast. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to pat this as dry as I can, kind of get all the water out, smear a light coating of oil on it, and then let it dry and we'll see what we have. I don't want to saturate it, just a pretty healthy coating of oil there, a little on both sides. So as the water leaves, the oil will slowly sink into the skin fiber. And oil sort of replaces the function of water and skin is kind of how I think of it in simplistic terms. All right, so now I'm going to dry this uh, preferably slow, although I'm kind of in a hurry so I can get this video posted. So here's what we ended up with. As you can see, it's kind of curled up here and it even cracked where I bent it because it's brittle and stiff. And this is what happens when you dry leather fast. Like I said, you don't want to dry leather too fast. You want to give it time for the water to leave and the oil to seep in and for the water to leave evenly. And this is a principle that we use also in drying wood to prevent it from cracking. But that's okay because I have maybe 25 or so other tanning materials to test and I'll, this isn't permanently damaged or anything by drying it fast. So I can re-soak it, re-do uh, it, maybe even soften a little bit and it'll get thrown in that lot of uh, samples and then we'll compare all of them together. My feeling in general though is that this is going to make a harsh and brittle type of leather like I said before and that's not necessarily a deal killer depending on what you have available. One good thing about this is you can run around you know anywhere just picking these oak galls and no one's going to care whereas if you cut a tree down uh, it's not always easy to find a tree to cut down. In my case it's really easy to find trees that need to be thinned anyway but that's not always the case. Now don't assume that all oak galls are gonna be the same. There's one type in Europe that has been used for a very long time for tanning leather. And you know I'm sure it doesn't make a brittle, harsh leather. In fact, it's supposed to be similar to sumac, which produces actually a soft tan. So I think it'd be worth trying oak galls wherever you live. This one is from California Valley White Oak, Quercus lobata. So what did we learn? Don't put your leather in super strong solutions but don't put it in super weak ass solutions and expect it to be tanned and preserved. Start with a weakish solution, keep the strength coming up pretty fast. When the leather's done, always oil it before you dry it and don't dry it too fast. And maybe one other thing we learned is look how much we can learn by tanning a little tiny piece of leather. Everyone wants to go straight in and tan a bear hide or a buffalo or something. And uh, you're much better off starting with a squirrel. Better yet, start with a squirrel and cut it into five or six pieces and tan those in different materials that you can gather around. How long does it take to gather like, you know, a double handful of material to tan a piece this big? You, you know, you can learn so much from doing that and you can experiment and afford to experiment. You know, you don't want to throw an entire hide in pure oak gall juice to see if it case hardens or not. Just throw in a little strip in a cup and see what happens. I'm going to get this posted up on the internet and uh, we'll visit this piece later.